Hello everyone and welcome to this week's edition of Night Sky Newscast. I'm your host, Jane Alapon, science reporter with the Dale Etheridge Planetarium at the College of Southern Nevada. This week's top stories include Lucy's discovery at Deaconish, an interview with the Las Vegas Astronomical Society president about his involvement in the Lucy mission, as well as what's up in our night sky. Hit that subscribe button if you're ready to jump right in. This weekend, the Leonid meteor shower peaks. The radiant, or the source of the meteors, will be in constellation Leo. However, the meteors will be more visible if you look across the entirety of the night sky because the meteor tails will be longer. The meteors come from the debris of the comet 55P Temple Tuttle. The Leonids fall to Earth at a fast rate and you may even catch a glimpse of a fireball. These are bigger and brighter meteors because they come from a big chunk of the comet. For the best view, make sure to be away from light pollution and look towards the east at around midnight. When the Lucy spacecraft flew by Dinkinish earlier this month, scientists were expecting one asteroid. Recent images came back and found two. Dinkinish had a moon. Weeks before seeing it, the Lucy team was already speculating that it might be a binary system because their instruments were seeing its brightness change with time. Dinkinish means marvelous in the Amharic language. It certainly lives up to its name. The Juno spacecraft observed mineral salts and organic material on Ganymede on October 30th. Ganymede is a moon of Jupiter and is the largest moon in our solar system. It's bigger than Mercury and has a vast ocean underneath its icy surface. Some of the chemicals detected were hydrogen sodium chloride, ammonium chloride, and sodium bicarbonate. Juno flew by Ganymede in June 2021, but this study was released only recently. Would you take a dive in this non-water ocean? Apollo astronaut Thomas K. Mattingly died aged 87 on October 31st. He was known as TK to fellow astronauts. TK led the development of the Apollo spacesuit and backpack. His most important role was the key decisions he made from home base to safely bring home the astronauts of Apollo 13. They were unable to land on the moon due to a broken oxygen tank and had to go back home. It caused a lot of problems because oxygen was used to breathe, but it also powered other life support functions like water and temperature control. May TK rest in peace in the stars. NASA released an app on November 2nd that can help you spot the International Space Station in the sky. Augmented reality, or AR, makes it easier to find it wherever you are. The ISS is always orbiting Earth, but the timing needs to be just right to see it. It needs to be dark and passing directly overhead where you are. We can see it because it reflects the sun's light, just like the moon. You can sign up for notifications on your phone to know when the next opportunities are to see the ISS in your area. Up next, we have an interview with John Heller, president of the Las Vegas Astronomical Society. He moved to Vegas in 1999 and joined LVAS three weeks later, though he didn't decide to step into the top role until last year. He is retired, but he supports astronomy by conducting citizen science with the Lucy mission and recon project. Let's hear more from him. The uh, actual Lucy spacecraft, the, the mission is to go to a set of asteroids, uh, a very large set of asteroids that are known as Jupiter Trojans. So a Trojan asteroid is an asteroid that orbits in the same orbit as a larger body. In our solar system, it's typically in the orbit with a planet. We actually have some in Earth's orbit that orbit. There's no chance of collision. They're in stable orbits, but they're spaced within our orbit. So in the case of Jupiter, these two clouds um, are about 90 degrees out from Jupiter, and they're in stable orbits. And there's almost as many asteroids in those two clouds, they assume, as there are in the main asteroid belt that we have between Mars and Jupiter. So there's thousands of them. But essentially, it's going to come into the Earth's orbit to get some gravitational pushes, and it's going to go back and forth between these clouds of asteroids that are in Jupiter's orbit. I think it takes about three years for each swing, and it's going to go back and forth um, and uh, visit both sets of these clouds. And originally, there were um, seven asteroids that it was going to visit, which was another first, more targets than any NASA probe had ever been directed towards. Now it's up to 10. RECON is an acronym for Research and Education Collaborative Occultation Network. RECON was started, I believe, about eight years ago, some time ago. RECON was this collaborative network 
and what it was, they provided equipment to schools, mostly high schools, in California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. And they set up this network. Uh, the idea was the schools would have this equipment uh, to do science with and to run programs with at their school. And then when one of these occultations occurred, they'd set up the equipment, collect data, and provide it back to the principal investigators. An occultation is any time you shade something or obscure something. So the way it's used in astronomy is whenever one body passes in front of another. An eclipse is an example of an occultation. Okay? But what we're looking at is when these asteroids pass in front of a star. And remarkably, when it, when it does that, it either blinks out or it diminishes. The star completely disappears. So it blinks out for a period of time. What we do is that um, by knowing the speed of that asteroid, it gives us a distance across the ground that we can draw a line. And you draw a set of lines from each of these observations, and you can get a very accurate size and shape um, on the object that um, is doing the occulting the, 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 on that asteroid. What is your involvement with the Lucy mission, Lucy and Recon, I guess? So I, many years ago, um, for one of the Astronomical Society meetings here at the planetarium, uh, Dr. Bowie and Dr. Keller came in and they were looking for volunteers. Um, the thing was that they're distributing this equipment, these telescopes and these uh, astro cameras and, and systems uh, to the schools, and they were mostly going to the science departments in the schools and things like that, but most of the educators that received this equipment didn't know astronomy. They weren't familiar with how to operate telescopes. They didn't know the night sky. So they were looking for amateur astronomers to um, partner with these different schools, the, the schools in, in this area. And uh, so I, I was getting ready to retire at that time from my day job. And I very quickly raised my hand and said, this sounds like something I'd like to be interested in. The data that we take, we're recognized in uh, scientific papers that are published for collecting the data and the various roles that we play. And so it's, it's just a, I feel like I'm doing real science as, a, as an average citizen, the old citizen science thing, oh, and that. it feels good. Yeah, uh, so tell us about the, the recon you did uh, for the Lucy mission right here at the planetarium. What'd you do? That happened to coincide with the launch of the Lucy mission back in either September or October of 2021. And what was going on is one of the Lucy targets that, uh, so this is one of the Trojan asteroids now, uh, Jupiter Trojan asteroids, they were trying to collect more data on it. But that shadow path, just like when there's a solar eclipse, that band is only so wide. Um, in this case, the, the width of that shadow or the size of that shadow is the size of the asteroid, okay? It comes out almost exact, that's how we can measure it. So it happened to be passing through this area. So they, um, ask, they get support uh, from the college to do some training and logistics out of the planetarium. So we had teams, uh, we drew largely from CSN and UNLV. So the teams would base out of here and then deploy to the assigned cords. We refer to them as cords, but the line that they had to be on that crossed the uh, shadow path and they worked out of here and that was a very successful campaign. Currently, I believe we only have one specific node, I think, um, in this area, because due to various circumstances, I mentioned the three that we had, because of people retiring, people changing, uh, the, none of those schools are any longer involved. So we have one set of equipment in the valley and um, remarkably this week, uh, NASA accepted a proposal from the same principal investigators to complement the Lucy space mission by further investigating these Trojan asteroids. So uh, there's going to be 226 occultations over a three year period. And uh, I don't plan to be able to support all of them. <laughs> I would like to see a cadre of um, volunteers to uh, participate and uh, be able to do some of these when they occur locally. So what that means is um, going out in the middle of the night for a few hours, losing some sleep, 
and we uh, set up the telescope and we collect data on the specific target object that the campaign is designated to look at. But yeah, if anybody would uh, want to be part of that, um, they can reach out to me through the LVAS website and let me know they're interested. I'll definitely get back to them. Anybody who's involved, who has an excitement about science, um, I think that's important nowadays. I mean, science um, is really driving our future in so many ways. And uh, whether you decide to do something professionally or whether you contribute as a citizen scientist or whether you just do it because it's an interest that you want to pursue, um, I, I think it's important to, to do that. Back to you, Studio Shaina. Finally, I'd like to leave you with some fun space images from the last month. As captured by a weather satellite, here's an image of the moon's shadow traveling across Earth during the Ring of Fire solar eclipse on October 14th. The Euclid telescope run by the European Space Agency released its first images on November 7th. Its mission is to explore dark matter and dark energy. This is the Horsehead Nebula captured by Euclid. This nebula is the closest giant star forming region to Earth, and scientists hope to use Euclid to find previously unseen Jupiter-sized planets being formed. Speaking of Juno, the spacecraft is now in its extended mission as it flies around Jupiter and its moons. This is an image of Io on October 15th. It's the most volcanically active moon in our solar system. Thank you for watching everyone. Let us know what your favorite thing was from this video in the comments below and feel free to leave any questions too. This is Shaina with Night Sky Newscast and until next time, keep your eyes to the skies and stay curious.